uh, from chapter number three. And uh, this chapter you can see, uh, it says introduction to control accounts. So mainly we're going to do chapter number three and four today. And this two chapter is all about control account. The control account is kind of uh, not new thing for us because we have done something on our transaction paper as well. So it's not gonna be very new to you. Uh, but some, uh, some of the techniques, some of the way how to control the account, that could be new because we have never done it before. But all the entries we're going to see uh, for sales ledger control account, for purchase ledger control account, that's gonna be all thing that you already done before from our transaction papers. So you already know how to do the debit and credit. And this, um, this control account will tell us like how to control this entry. Now let's talk about control account. <clears throat> Let's talk about control account. What is control account and why it is important to make the control account? The first thing is when you make a transaction, you record the transaction. Now it is possible there is an error on this transaction. There is a mistake on this transaction in intentionally or unintentionally. This is possible. Uh, that could be a mistake on the sales ledger. That could be a mistake on the purchase ledger. Let's say you're writing something 1030, uh, but rather than writing 1030, you write 1330. So this is possible. There is a lot of mistake or error could happen during your recording. So when you have a controlling system, uh, then you can identify this error. Now, as the word, as the word is saying control, as the word is saying control, that means how are we going to control the account? So if I split this word, one is control, another one is accounts. So how we basically can control the accounts? Accounts means the recording, accounts means the sales ledger control account, accounts means the purchase ledger control account. Because from this chapter, we only learn how to control the account for purchase ledger and sales ledger, so two things. Now, <clears throat> let me explain a little bit. I hope all of you remember the purchase ledger and the sales ledger, but still I want to just refresh your memory to what we have done on our transaction paper. So we have two types of things. One is a sales ledger, one is purchase ledger. That is, when I said sales ledger, I'm talking about my credit customer. When I said sales ledger, I'm talking about my credit customer because all the credit customer balance at the end come to sales ledger. On the other hand, when I talk about purchase ledger, I'm talking about my supplier. What type of supplier? Credit supplier, not the cash supplier, only the credit supplier. So I have two things, sales ledger, and we have Purchase ledger. So we have sales ledger and we have purchase ledger. Now, you need to remember one thing. When I said sales ledger, that means I'm talking about credit customer. Credit customer. I'm talking about credit customer balance. Now, the sales ledger represent only one credit customer balance. The sales ledger represent only one customer credit balance. So I'm talking about individual customer. Individual customer. Let's say X limited, let's say Y limited, let's say Z limited. So I'm talking about only one customer. So how much we expecting or how much is due from that particular customer? We're talking about only one customer. That is sales ledger. Now you might thinking like, what happened if I have a lot of customer? Let's say, let's say uh, you work for a company, you work for uh, British Gas you work for British Gas and you have a millions of customers. 
you work for British Gas and you have a millions of customers. Now, one day your manager asks you, how much is it due? Uh, let's say we said, how much is due from Maha? So you have a customer named Maha. So your manager asks, can you say how much is balance outstanding from Maha? Then you open sales ledger account for Maha. So let's say I'm opening a sales ledger account. Sales ledger for Maha. So I have found maybe the balance CD is 1,000 pound. So I have a customer named Maha and expecting 1,000 pound from that customer. Now let's say your manager said, okay, I understand we're expecting 1,000 pound from Maha. How much is due from all the customer? Let's say you have 1 million customer. You have 1 million customer, you are a British gas provider, you have a millions of customer. Now, every single customer, we have a T account. For every single customer, we have a T account, means the ledger account. Now, is it possible, is it possible to add all the balance CD one by one? So let's say for Maha 1000, let's say we have another customer, let's say Abdul, let's say abdul sales ledger let's say balance cd 2000 so that's how we have a 1 million customer or 2 million customer now if you tell your manager okay i'm gonna keep counting all the balance cd or from ba balance pd from every single sales ledger and i'm going to tell you how much is due from all the customers now, what do you think? How long is it going to take? It's going to take ages. It's going to take a long time to calculate every single balance CD or balance BD to identify the total customer. How much is outstanding from all the customer? So this is one of the reason we prepare another account. We prepare another account that is called sales ledger control. Sales ledger control. So there is two things, please remember that. One is sales ledger, another one is sales ledger control. Sales ledger talk about only one person, only one customer. Sales ledger control talk about all the customer we have. Sales ledger control talk about all the customer we have. Now, if I have 1 million customer, how much is due from 1 million customer, I can easily identify from my sales ledger control. So when my manager asks me, talk about like asking about one individual customer or one particular customer, let's say Maha, I open the sales ledger, I tell this is the amount of standing from Maha. But if my manager asks me how much is due from all the customer, I open sales ledger control. Now on the sales ledger control, we don't have any name. On the sales ledger control, we do not write the customer name. We only write the total amount because sales ledger control not concerned about individual customer. It's a total balance. It's a total balance. So sales ledger control, let's say we said balance CD 3000. So that means if I added all my credit customer, it will be equal to 3000. Now let's talk about Maha and Abdul. So Maha is supposed to give to the company 1,000 as outstanding balance and up to 2,000. So if I added 1,000 plus 2,000, it will be equal to 3,000. So this, this 3,000 will be exactly our balance CD for sales ledger control. So what are we understanding from here? Very, very careful. If you understand that, life will be easy for you for the control account. So sales ledger, we talk about only one customer, individual customer. On the other hand, sales ledger control, we talk about, um, so on the sales ledger control, we talk about all other customers, all the total customers, so total balance. Sales ledger, individual customer, sales ledger control, total balance of the customer. Now, we expecting if I added all the sales ledger, sales ledger means one customer, another customer and the customers. If I added all the sales ledger, 
is, is supposed to be matched with our sales pleasure control because sales pleasure total equal to sales pleasure control. So this, this should be like this, equal, ideally. But sometimes if I made a mistake, this is possible, my sales pleasure and the sales pleasure control is not matching. For example, I can do the cross check. For example, I can do the cross check. Now the cross check is all about how much is the total balance of the sales ledger and how much is the total balance of sales ledger control. So let's talk about that. All right, so let's say if I added this to the sales ledger control and the sales ledger, let me erase that. Okay. Yeah, it's not working. So let's say if I added my sales ledger and my sales ledger control balance is not matching. So for example, Maha and Abdul total balance is 3000, but my sales ledger control is saying no, it's 3500. So it's not matching. When it is not matching, I have to identify the reason why it is not matching. So if I know the reason, this is the reason I can solve the issue. So what we understand from here, we understand sales ledger control <clears throat> and the purchase ledger control, this is all about the total balance. Sales ledger and the purchase ledger is the individual balance. And ideally, all the balance from the sales ledger control and all the balance from sales ledger should equal. So whatever is the total balance from the sales ledger control equal to total individual balance of sales ledger. If it is not matched, we need to find the reason we have to solve it. So even you can see, you can control the balance. If I only follow, let's say if I only follow sales ledger, and if I don't follow the sales ledger control, I have no way to cross check. I cannot cross check it even if I made a mistake. If I keep the sales ledger control, not the sales ledger, same thing, I cannot cross check. So if there is a two thing, and if I know at the end this two will be equal, then I can cross check and find is there any difference. So this is one of the way we can do the control as well. So that's why the control account is really, really important to identify any error that you make during your recording period. This is all about the control account. We're going to see inside, we're going to see the details, but I hope you have an idea now about the thing. So we have sales ledger, that is individual balance talking about one customer. Sales ledger control is the total balance talking about all the customer balance. And it has to be equal. When it is not equal, then you find the error, find the reason. Okay, let's move on. Now we will <clears throat> go inside of the chapter in detail and see what is there. Okay, so the first thing uh, that we're going to see some journal, that's a recap from the earlier studies. Recap from your earlier studies. That means we have already done this thing on our transaction paper, that is uh, bookkeeping transaction, and we, we know how to do the debit and credit, but it's just a recap to remember that journal. Let's, let's do that very quickly. Let's do it together. The first one we can do activity one. It's a double entry credit cell, double entry, credit cell. So let's have a look what is here. I said in the month of January, in the month of January, a VAT registered business makes sale on credit of 20,000 excluding VAT. So a VAT registered business, they're making a sell, credit sell. How much is the amount? 20,000 excluding VAT. That means the VAT is not inside. VAT there is no VAT inside of 20,000 excluding. So we have to add 20%. So we need to add 20% VAT. 20% 20 of 20,000 should be 4,000. So that will be VAT. And my total sale will be 24,000. This is the story. What type of sale? Credit sale. Requirement, what is the double entry to record this in the general ledger, that's fine. So let's do that. 
what will be the journal for that? I make a credit cell with VAT. So what will be the journal? When I make a sale, obviously I create customer. What type of customer? Credit customer. And we have a name for them, for the credit customer. So all the credit customer, we call them sales ledger control. Sales ledger control. And obviously this is happening because of the sale. And when I make a sale, I create the liability for VAT. When I make any time, if I make a sales, the VAT I have collected from the customer is not for me. I have to pay it back to HMRC. So that's my liability. So we said, what will be the journal? So the journal will be, always try to start with the debit first. Don't do credit first and later on debit. Uh, always do debit first, then you do credit. So first you do the debit, sales ledger control, sales ledger control, that's my debit, amount will be total 24,000. This is the money we expecting from the customer. Why it is debit? Because it's an asset. Some customer going to pay some money to me, so that's my asset. Some customer going to pay some money to me, that's my asset. So that's my asset, that's my debit. Then the VAT is a liability, 4,000 pound. That's my credit because I have to pay the VAT to HMRC. I'm just taking it from the customer on behalf of HMRC. Every time I make a sale, remember I create the liability, I increase the liability. And the last one is sales. Sales is always income. Sales is always income and sales is always a credit. Is universal truth? Sales is always credit. So what's happening here? I'm collecting 24,000 pound from the customer. That's my total sales ledger control. So I'm expecting 24,000 pound from my credit customer out of 24,000 pound, 4,000 pound I'm collecting for VAT, 20,000 pound I'm collecting for sales. So 20,000 is for me, 4,000 for the VAT. That's it. Then we move to the next one. That's really easy one, I know. So all of you got the right answer. Let's do the next one, activity two. Double entry credit purchase. This time I'm purchasing, this time I'm not selling. Credit purchase. In this month of January, a VAT registered business makes purchase on credit of 10,000 excluding VAT. So in this month of January, a VAT registered business make, makes purchase on credit of 10,000 excluding VAT. So you're buying something on credit and uh, there is a VAT as well. So let's have a look. If I buy something, purchase is expense for me, that will be debit. So purchase is the actual purchase without VAT because VAT I'm gonna show it separately because VAT I'm gonna claim back. I'm a VAT registered business. I'm gonna claim all my VAT back. So I would say purchase, that is 10,000. That is debit. This time VAT will be debit because VAT I'm gonna claim back. That's my expense as well. And because of this purchase, I have created a liability and I have to pay total 12,000 pounds to my supplier. I always paid with the VAT, I collect with the VAT. It's not like I tell my customer, give me my money, give the VAT to HMRC. No, it doesn't work. Same like when you pay to your supplier, you pay with the VAT. So he said purchase, ledger control, 12,000. That's our liability, that's why it's credit. Why liability? I did not make the payment yet, I have to pay. I buy the things, but I didn't pay yet, so it's a liability. All right, so I hope all of you know this journals just to refresh your memory because it will need when you prepare the control account. All right, so this one from chapter number nine, remember from the last transaction paper, discount allowed. So discount allowed is debit, VAT is debit, sales ledger control credit. Because of the discount, your customer balance will go down. You know it, this one, so discount received. Purchase ledger control will be debit. VAT credit, discount receipt credit is the income for you. So you can read this thing later on. 
then the purpose of control account you can read yourself why you need to prepare the uh, why it is important we already discussed that but you can read more to understand more all right the next thing we have to remember this template self ledger control self ledger control talking about individual or total so when we see the self ledger control are you going to talk about one customer or the total balance? Which one? Please very, very careful. We talk about total balance. In sales ledger control, we do not talk about one customer. We talk about all the customer. So that means when I said the opening balance here, I mean all the balance outstanding from total customer. Then credit sell, how much credit sell we made to all the customer. Bank, how much you received from all the credit customer. Sales return, how much sales return we have during the period from all the customer. Discount allowed, how much discount totally given to all the customer. So sales has a control about total balance. If you can just remember that, sales has a control means total balance, that would be very, very helpful for you when you do the reconciliation. Okay, so let's move on. What else we have here? On the next one, they said the meaning of every single word we have. So balance PD, opening balance, balance CD, closing balance, credit sell. So that means the sell you make but did not receive the money yet. Bank, how much money you received from the credit customer, it's called bank. Sales return, if any credit customer return to you. Discount allowed if any discount you're given to your credit customer, that's it. Let's talk about the purchase ledger control. This is the opposite of sales ledger control. This time you can see the opening balance on the credit side, not on the debit side. Purchase ledger control, again total balance, but opening balance on the credit side. Opening balance on the credit side. Why it is on the credit side? Because it's a liability balance. Purchase ledger control is a supplier account. How much money I have to pay to my suppliers? So opening balance will be on the credit side. If I make any credit purchase, that will increase my balance. I already have some balance. If I buy more, if I purchase more, so it will be increased. Total balance, how much total? Not from one supplier, from all the suppliers. Bank, how much money I already paid to my supplier? Purchase return, is there anything I have returned to my supplier? Discount received, did I receive any discount? So only the difference between the purchase ledger control and the sales ledger control, sales ledger control opening balance come on the debit side, and if anything, reduce the balance come on the credit side. On the other hand, the purchase ledger control opening balance start from the credit side, anything that reduce the balance is record on the debit side. So writing this side, it will increase your liability. Anything that will decrease your liability, you're writing on that side is opposite, because this side is a credit side, this side is a debit side, and debit and credit is like a plus and minus. So if you want to increase the balance, writing on the same side. If you want to decrease the balance, writing on the opposite side. So let's move on. Okay, so there is an example here. Let's look at the example. Illustration number one. In this illustration, they say the counting system for credit sell. The counting system for credit sell. We will see how the sales ledger, let's do it together. We will see how the sales ledger and the sales ledger control are created and reconciled through an illustration. All right, so we have sales ledger. That means individual balance, sales ledger control, total balance. W. Johnson has two credit customers. So W. Johnson has two credit customers. They can have 200, 2 million, doesn't matter. If you know the way how to do it, that's the main thing. W. Johnson has two credit customers, A and B. On 1st of May, 2000, on 1st of May, 2000, customer A owes 300 and customer B owes 170. Therefore, 470 in total. First of May, that means opening balance, isn't it? Beginning of the month. 
first of May, opening balance. If anything start with the first of the month, you need to understand that's our opening balance. Customer A, uh, outstanding balance 300. Customer B, outstanding balance uh, 170. And total is 470. In May, the following transaction occur and recorded on the day book. So after 1st of May, this is happening what on the below, and you have to record all of this. The sales day book is used to record all invoices and sales to credit customer buying on credit. We know it, even if they don't say it, we know it. Sales day book only dealing with the credit sale. We never record any cash sales on the sales day book. Sales day book is all about the credit sale, we know it. Okay, let's go in details and try to find it out what else they have. So on the sales day book, all the credit sales we make. So let's have a look what is here. On the sales day book, we have 3rd of May, 8th of May, 20 of May, and 28th of May. Invoice number, total 3rd of May, we make a sales 240, VAT 40, 200 net. Then 8th of May, customer B. You have to remember that because we make a different time sales to different customer. So 3rd of May, we sales to customer A. 8th of May, we sells to customer B. 20th of May, we sells to customer B. And 28th of May, customer A. So this is the individual, A, B, B, A. This is the individual customer. And the total, we make a sales during this period, 756. So total will be relevant to the sales ledger control. And the individual sales will be relevant to the sales ledger. Because sales ledger talking about customer A and B. But sales ledger control, total. So when I do the sales ledger control, 756 will be relevant for that. That's my total sales. That's my total VAT, and that's my total net. Then move to the next book, that is sales return day book. On the sales return day book, they said if items are returned by the customer, credit notes are recorded in the sales return day book. We know it. If any customer return to me, we issue the credit note to them. Sales return day book, debt. We have a detail. So customer A returned to me 240 pound. Customer B returned to me 120. And total return is 360. So I'm saying total separately because total we need it for the sales ledger control when you prepare the sales ledger control account. Cash book, debit side, all about how much money we have received. All about how much money we have received. Cash book, we have two sides, debit and credit. Debit side, all about money into the business. Credit side, all about money out from the business. We've already done it. So let's have a look how much we receive from customer A. From customer A, we have received 276 pounds. That are my trade receivables. Trade receivables means credit customer. Then customer B, we have received 170. And that also trade receivables. Total, we have received 446 from my trade receivables or credit customer. Discount allowed, that will tell us how much discount we give to which customer. So we can see here, we give only discount to customer A. We give only discount to customer A, that is 24 pound. VAT is four, net is 20. We didn't give any discount to customer B. That's fine, so this is the story. They give us some day book, book of prime entry, and they ask us to prepare the sales ledger control and the sales ledger, and they ask us to reconcile it. So let's start with the sales ledger. For the sales ledger, we talk about only one customer. For the sales ledger, we talk about individual customer, A, B, C, D, one by one, so that we can identify how much is outstanding from customer A, how much outstanding from customer B, C, D, whatever it is. The subsidiary sales ledger for the W. Johnson in May will be as follows. Customer A, sales ledger account, I, I mentioned this word so many times, sales ledger and sales ledger control, so that you can remember that. Sales ledger is individual, sales ledger control is total. So I'm writing the customer name, you see that? Customer A, I'm writing the name because it is a sales ledger. If it is a sales ledger control, I never write anyone name. Okay, so detail, amount, detail, amount. So left hand side is the debit side, right hand side is the credit side. Remember that even you don't have to write, but it, by default, left-hand side is always debit side, 
right hand side is always credit side. That's my sales suggest, so customer account. So it's an asset, opening balance will be on the debit side. So opening balance, balance BD, debit side, 300. If you remember, your opening balance from customer A, it was 300 pound. Opening balance, customer A owes 300 pound. So this is the opening balance from the customer A, 300 pound. Then there is two invoice, invoice and invoice. That means we have made sales twice after the opening balance to that customer. So let's have a look at the sales day book. So on the sales day book, I can see I make a sales to customer A, 240, and customer A again, 216. So twice I make a sales to this customer. So 240 and 216, that should come on the debit side. So 240 and 216. So if I make a credit sale, that will increase his balance. So I'm writing on the debit side. That's my asset. I'm expecting the money from him. Now, if he return anything, if he paid anything, or if he receive any discount, that will reduce his balance. I'm writing on the opposite side. Let's talk about the credit note, 240. So on the sales return day book, I can see customer A return to me 240, that's perfect. So it will writing on the credit side. Then we have cash book debit side, how much he paid to me, customer A 276. Again, I'm writing bank on the credit side. And is there any discount I give to customer A? Yes, 24 pound. I'm writing this one as well. So credit note 240, bank 276 and discount allowed 24, that's it. After that, all I need to do, I need to do balance CD and BD, and we know it how to do it. So we added the higher side, this side looks higher, 756, writing the same thing, 756 here, minus 240, minus 276, and minus 24, gives me the balance CD 216. And this balance CD is the closing balance for this month and opening for the next month, that is 216 again, balance BD. Now, if my manager asks me, how much we expecting, from customer A, we said 216. So this is the money due from customer A. Then you're gonna do the same thing for customer B. Opening balance 170. We have sold twice to this customer, that is 180 and 120. Then we have a credit note. That means the customer returned to me. Bank 170, he paid to me. There is no discount allowed for this customer. You can check on the discount allowed day book. You see on the discount allowed day book, you only give discount to customer A, not B. So I'm writing this side and my balance it is 180. So from customer A, we are expecting 216, customer B, 180. Now we have only two customers, so it is done. Sales ledger is done. Now the next point is sales ledger control. That is from total customer, the total balance. So let's have a look at that. Sales ledger control, see I'm not writing anyone name, not writing anyone name. Sales ledger control, total balance. Left hand side is the debit side, right hand side is the credit side. Now the opening balance is 470, that is total, total. Only I'm gonna take the total balance. If you go back to your question, you see the total balance outstanding from two customer 470. Now I'm gonna take only total balance. Then sales day book, my total sales is 756. I'm gonna take 756. Sales return day book, my total return is 360. I'm gonna take 360. Cash book, I have received total 446. I'm gonna take that one. And the discount allowed day book 24. So we can move there. You can see this one, total sales 756. Sales return, we have 360. Bank 446, discount allowed 24 and the balance sheet is 396. Now this balance sheet has to be equal to the balance sheet we have from our sales ledger. So if I have two customers, if I added two balance sheet, it's supposed to be equal to balance sheet of the sales ledger control. Now we're going to see the reconciliation. We try to see if there's any difference. Customer A, balance sheet is 216, isn't it? Customer A, balance sheet is 216, yes. Customer B, balance CD is 180. So customer B, balance CD 180. So total of the sales ledger account balance, sales ledger, when you read, you read slowly, sales ledger. So individual total balance is 396. 
and balance BD at the end of the May in the sales ledger control account is 396. So you can see this one, our sales ledger control say 396. And the difference is nil. And the difference is nil. In the example, they didn't make any difference, but in the exam, there will be difference. And you're gonna see the next example, how to solve the issues. So obviously now you understand why it is important and how the sales ledger and the sales ledger control is work. So we prepared the individual sales ledger for every single customer. After that, we added all the balance CD and tried to match with the sales ledger control. And it's supposed to be, or ideally it has to be equal. If it is not equal, we find the reason why. And that is called reconciliation. All right, so let's move on to the, this is our purchase day book. They said on the purchase day book is the same story. Purchase day book, purchase return, cash book, this time credit side, and discount receipt day book. We have customer C and D. You can read yourself that one, give you the same thing. So, the way we reconcile before, we do the same thing. You can see that example later on, but it's a, just the same thing, just opposite of sales ledger control, that is purchase ledger control. VAT control account. Okay, let's talk about the VAT control account. Now, VAT control account. VAT control account is a liability account. Remember that. VAT control account is a liability account. Please make sure you remember um, you read this chapter because sometimes the theory question come from here that will help you to understand why it is important to prepare the VAT control account. So further control to consider VAT control account. Before you look at this account, it is useful to recap the principle of VAT seen in earlier studies. You already know it. So VAT is basically due to HMRC that is 20%. If this is the VAT is excluded, we add 20%. If the VAT is included, we divide by six. We already know it. You don't have to recap too much. We already know how it work. Then VAT on sale, we called it output VAT. VAT on purchase, we called it input VAT. The difference between output and input, we pay to HMRC. So that's all right for us. There's nothing new. Let's talk about the VAT control account. This one, normally come to the exam for 15 marks. So make sure you have a very good understanding of that. Okay, let's talk about VAT control account. Now VAT control account is, is, a, is a, by default is a liability account because normally you don't, you don't collect VAT from HMRC, you pay VAT to HMRC unless there is some unusual thing happen and you buy a lot of things this month or this period, but your sales is really, really low. Only that case, your VAT you paid more than you collect. Maybe only that time you pay the VAT, you collect the VAT from HMRC, so HMRC will give a refund. Other than every time, this is the business who pay VAT to HMRC. So it's a credit account, it's a liability account. VAT normally is submitted every three months, it's a standard period. So VAT return is due every three months, quarterly. And obviously uh, the control account means how you get the accurate figure, how much VAT is due to HMRC. Now, as we said, as we said, we have two types of VAT. One is output VAT, and one is input VAT. So output VAT or output tax is a VAT on sales. On sales, so if you make a sales, the VAT you have collected from the customer, we called it output VAT. On the other hand, when you make a purchase, when you buy something, when you pay VAT to the supplier, we called it input VAT. Input VAT. And ultimately, we pay to HMRC the difference between the output and the input. Let's say your output VAT is 100 and your input VAT is 50. So the difference is 50. This 50 is payable to HMRC. So what we understand from here, we understand output VAT will increase the liability and input VAT decrease the liability because this input VAT I'm going to take away from the output. This is the same thing we're going to do for the control account. So in control account, we prepare a T account and we call it VAT control account. VAT control account. Remember the opening balance, always the credit balance until the question says it is a debit balance. For example, this illustration or example, they say the business has a credit balance, 3000. Now even the question already said credit balance, 
So we are writing on the credit balance, 2000. If the question doesn't say anything, if the question just say, VAT control account opening balance 3000, they don't say it is a debit or credit, it's still you will take on the credit side, yeah? If the question said, VAT control account balance 3000 and didn't say anything about is it debit or credit, you still take this one on the credit side. But if the question clearly mentioned VAT uh, control have a debit balance, then only that time you take it on the debit side. Other than never ever VAT control account balance come on the debit side, it's always on the credit side. So this is the first thing. Now, the credit side is all about output VAT and the debit side all about input VAT. That means if the liabilities increase, you write on the credit side. If the liabilities decrease, you write on the debit side. Liability increase on the credit side, liability decrease on the debit side. Let's talk about that. Start the first one. Let's do it together, everyone. So the first one they said VAT on sale. You make a sale and you collect it the VAT. So if this is the situation, your liability will be increased or decreased. A VAT on sale. If you make a sale and if you collect the VAT, our liability will be plus increase. Yes, break show our liability will be increased. So we're gonna write VAT on sale on that side. So sales. 5,000. Doesn't matter if it is a cash sale or credit sale, as long as I make a sale, because if I make a sale, I collect the VAT from the customer, and this VAT I have to give it to HMRC, so I'm increasing my liability. The next one we have, <coughs> sales return. What happens if the customer return to you? You make a sale, and the customer after a few weeks return to you. So your liability will be decreased or increased again. Your liability will be Decrease, yes, your liability will be decreased because if the customer returns to you for any reason, you're not going to pay the VAT for that, isn't it? You will tell the HMRC, listen, that was a great sell, and the customer returns to me, I'm not going to pay VAT for that. Where customer returns to me, and I never get any money from the customer. So that will decrease the VAT. So we said sales return. I'm writing SR. SR means sales return. So we write 500. The next one we have VAT on cash sale. So you make some cash sales and you collect the VAT. What happened? Your VAT will be increased or decreased? The VAT will be increased. HMH, is, HMH will tell us it doesn't matter. It is a cash cash sale or credit sale. It's no matter for me. As long as you make a sale, you collect the VAT, give me the VAT. That, that will increase the liability. So 300, cash sale, 300. Then we have VAT on purchase. So I buy something and I paid some VAT to my supplier. That's the input VAT. So when I buy something, when I paid the VAT, that will decrease my liability because I will reduce this amount from the output VAT. That will decrease my total liability and I'll record on the debit side. So VAT on purchase. 4,000. Then VAT on purchase return. VAT on purchase return. So that will increase the opposite side, isn't it? Because if I buy something and you claim the VAT, and after a few weeks I return the product, so I cannot claim the VAT if I return something, isn't it? That will increase it again. So purchase return, 600. Then VAT on discount allowed. If you give a discount to someone, it will increase your liability or decrease? That will increase, that will decrease my liability, isn't it? Because first I give the discount, then I charge the VAT. For example, if I tell to uh, Preksha, Preksha, our price is 1,000 pounds, but I know you, you are my student, so I'll give you 200 pound discount. So for you, it will be 800, not 1,000. So for you, it will be 800. And I'm going to charge the VAT 20% on 800, not 1,000, not 1,000. So after the discount, I charge the VAT. 
So the VAT is supposed to be on 1,200, but now the VAT come down to 160. So my liability is decreasing because of the discount. Because I give the discount first, then I charge the VAT on net. We never charge VAT on the list price or on the total amount. We charge VAT on the net price. So that's why it will decrease our liability. So discount allowed, that is 200. Then discount received, that's opposite of discount allowed, isn't it? That will increase our liability. So discount received, that is 100. And the final one is bank payment to HMRC. If you already make some payment to HMRC, so what happened? If you already paid something to HMRC, that means your liability will be decreased because you already make the payment. So he said bank, that is 2,800. That's it. So this is a very straightforward question. And in the exam, you will get up to uh, 15 marks for this question. So I would say, if you do just a little bit practice, you already know it, just a little bit practice will give you easy 15 marks, solid 15 marks. All right, you can see the solution here, they just said it. So once you've done all of this, all you need to do, you need to do the balance CDBD. So the credit side, you're gonna add all of this. If I add all of this, it will be 9,000. And from 9,000, I'll take away all of this minus, and that gives me the difference of 1,500, that's my balance CD. And this balance CD will come as a balance BD opposite side. So my liability for this period is 1,500, that is closing and opening for next period. And this is on the credit side, that's my credit balance. You see that? All right, any question from here so far, whatever we discussed? Anything, any question? Okay, no, very good. So let's move on to one of the activity. Let's do that. Activity three. Now this question, uh, let me try to make it bigger, smaller, so that you can see it. All right, it's better. So you see this question, this question is all about the VAT control account. Now here they give you everything. So they give us the book, they give us the sales day book, they give us the purchase day book. They give us the sales return day book. They give us the purchase return day book. Discount allowed day book. Discount received day book and cash book. So we only talk about the VAT. Remember on the exam, they might give you this type of question, but we only take the VAT. We don't take anything else. We don't take self. When I prepare the VAT control account, I only consider the VAT. I don't take any sale. I don't take any net or gross or anything. No, I only concern about VAT. So let's prepare the T account. Let's do that. Let's have a look. Is there any opening balance? So let's talk about, there's no opening balance, isn't it? That's all right. So let's do that. Okay, let's do it together. VAT control account. There is no opening balance. VAT control account. Let's start with this one. Sales day book. VAT 44,000. Just tell me, is it on the debit side or on the credit side? Sales day book. VAT increase, yes, credit side. Just tell me debit credit, that will be fine. So on the credit side, you're gonna write sales, 44,000. Next one, sales return day book, VAT 7184. Which side I'm going to write, debit or credit? Debit side, very well done. I'll write sales return, SR, that means sales return, 7184. 7184. Oh. Very good. Then you move to discount allowed day book, VAT 480. Discount allowed day book. 
Is it on the debit side or on the credit side? On the debit side, yeah. Discount allowed 480. Then we have cash book. On the cash book, I can see cash sell 10,800 cash sell. <clears throat> because of the cash sales, we have collected some VAT on the credit side. Doesn't matter, cash sell, credit sell, need to pay the VAT. There is no skip of VAT. Then the next one we have purchase day book, 28,000. Purchase day book, that will come on our debit side. Very good. So purchase day book, 28,000 debit side. Then we have purchased the ton, that is 4808, that's on the credit side. Purchased the ton, 4808. And we have the last one, discount received, 240. Discount received, that will be on the credit side. So 240. All right, so let's make the total. The credit side looks higher, makes the total of the credit side fast. How much is the total of the credit side? Let's make it total 44,000 plus 108 plus 4808 plus 240, that is. 59,848, yeah, 59,848. That's the total, I'm gonna write the same thing here, 59,848. And I'm gonna minus this three, minus 7184, minus 480, and minus 228,000. That gives me 24,184. 24,184, that's my balance, CD. And this balance CD will come as opposite side on the bottom, balance PD, same thing, 24,184. That's it. If you know this one, 15 marks is there, easy 15 marks. All right, that's good, that's good. So let's move on to our next topic, I think this is the end of the chapter, I guess. Okay, so, all right, so how much 24, 24? There is a question here on question number B, they said, okay, let's do that. So this question, number B, they are saying, the VAT return has been now completed and shows an amount owing from HM revenue and custom 24, 184. Is the VAT return correct? What do you think? They are saying correct? No, isn't it? It is not going from. They are just trying to uh, think we don't know. So they are just like uh, telling us, oh, you will get it back. But the truth is like, we know it, isn't it? It's not we'll get it back, you have to pay. So we said, no, this is not true. I said no. Yeah. Yes, I yeah, that's true. But there's just a question like asking you so that you quickly look the figure and you said, Oh, this is a yes, and just quickly say yes. This is the reason. Sometimes students know the figure and they have the figure. This they said, Oh, this is the figure, that means that they don't read the whole question. They just see the figure and they said, Yes, this is a figure. Because the question said, Is the VAT return correct? And you you said, Oh, I know the figure, it's just twenty four one four. So this is yes. Why discount received on the credit side? What is this? Okay, um, yeah, uh, well you said why discount received on the credit side. Now, I'll tell you why. So discount received, discount received. What happened when you receive the discount, we don't make the payment yet. It's a credit purchase, isn't it? For example, you make a credit purchase, that is 1,000 pound credit purchase and the discount you have received 200 pound 
and actually they charge you 800 and the VAT on that is 20%. So that is let's say 160. So let's say this is the amount is the purchase, credit purchase. And the VAT is supposed to be here 200 pounds. And here on the 800 pounds, the VAT is 160. So the difference is 40. So because of any discount you received, because of any discount you received, you cannot claim this amount. So if you don't receive the discount, you're supposed to claim 200 pound VAT, but because of the discount you have received, now you're claiming VAT only how much? 160. So this 40 pound will increase your VAT liability. <clears throat> All right. Yeah. Uh, discount receive you'll get a credit note for weighing less so VAT liabilities figure uh yes yeah, so obviously like uh, uh as uh, you know like what happened when there is a um, uh journal so when you buy something on credit we said purchase is debit and VAT is debit and uh purchase ledger control is credit isn't it now if you receive the discount obviously that's income for you so even any amount you receive discount Inside of the discount, there's a portion of VAT as well. Any amount you receive discount, there's a portion of VAT uh, inside. So you have to make sure you don't claim the VAT because you never paid this amount. So you have to just charge it, increase it. Okay, so let's move on to our, this is the end of the chapter. Let's move on to the next chapter. Well, on the next chapter, you're gonna see preparing and the reconciling of control accounts. So at the chapter number three, we have seen, uh, we have seen uh, introduction to control account, but now we're going to see preparing and reconciling of control account. So how we prepare and reconcile that. So let's move on to this chapter. Let's talk about, you already talked about the control account. So all you need to do this one, this topic, all of you need to read it very well. The reason for the difference between the control account and the subsidiary ledger is very important because in the exam, this reason will give you headache. But I'm telling you, don't do it at the beginning. So if you think the reason you're not sure, so they'll give you a calculate, they'll ask you to find the difference and they'll tell you why it is not matching. What is the difference? Why it is not matching? So why there is a difference between the sales ledger and sales ledger control? If you cannot get the reason very quickly, leave it for the last question. Don't spend too much time. That will be only two marks question. So for only two marks, don't spend like 20 minutes. Sometimes I have seen a student on the exam, what they do, they just spend a lot of time try to calculate why the difference, what is the reason. They've done everything. Out of uh, 15 marks, they've done like uh, almost 80%, but 20% just for the reason, they're spending a lot of time. Don't do it. So what you do, you complete the exam first, you finish the exam, and after that, you'll come back to this question again. Then you can check as many time as you want, but don't spend during the exam time, then you will be running out of time. How to find the reason, how to identify the reason, there's a lot of explanation here. So please make sure you read this one, it's very important, this page. It will tell you the exact way how to find the reason, what is the reason, what is the reason for the difference. Okay, we'll do some activity, we'll do some example, and we'll see that. In activity one, sales ledger reconciliation. Sales ledger reconciliation, let's do that. This is a summary of a transaction with a credit customer. This is a summary. This is a summary of transaction with credit customer during March. So we're talking about sales ledger account. Sales ledger is a individual balance. And we talk about reconciliation. Now we don't have any customer names separately. Maybe we're gonna see it later on. But for the time being, we can see here sales ledger control that is total balance. Okay. This is a summary of transaction. There's a lot of transaction with credit customers, all the credit customers. So all the credit customers total sales they 
record here. So from there, I'm going to prepare my sales pleasure control. That's fine. So we'll do that after the sales pleasure control. They said the following balances, the following balances were in the sales ledger. So that means we talk about one, one customer, so individual customer. So we have a customer now named ABC Limited. We have a customer, uh, uh, Beavers UK. We have a customer CEG. We have a lot of customer. The way we have done for customer A and B, the example, we're gonna do the same way. So after that, the last, reconcile the balance shown ever with the sales stage control account balance and you have calculated in part A. So what is the difference? And after that, they'll ask you why there is a difference, the reason. This is the end of the question. So you'll have four parts. The first one, they'll ask you to calculate the sales ledger control account, either the sales ledger or the purchase ledger. They'll ask you to calculate that. Then after that, they will give you the they will give you the individual balance. So of the sales ledger balance, and you added all of this, all the customer you add together and try to match with the balance CD you get from the sales ledger control. And once you match it, if it is not match, you find the difference. So here you're gonna write the sales ledger control account balance, the total, and the sales ledger account total here. So whatever is the difference, you're gonna write it down here. And after that, the final bit is try to find the reason why there's a difference. And as I said, this reason question, this number C question could be difficult. So you need to be like, uh, very expert of the reason as the page I have shown you before you need to read that page very well and in the exam you do this one later on if you cannot get it in two minutes then leave it and come back after the exam done you done everything then you come back this question again all right so let's do that let's do that the first question let's do that activity one sales ledger reconciliation we talk about sales ledger so let's do that Total balance, sales ledger. The first one is balance of receivables at first March, opening balance. First March 2000, opening balance 28,556. Which side I'm writing? Debit side or credit side? Sales ledger opening balance. Sales ledger opening balance. I'm writing on the debit side because that's my credit customer. That's my credit customer and they're my asset. I'm writing on the debit side. Opening balance is on the debit side. So I'm gonna write balance BD on this side, 28, five, six, six. All right, then the next one I have goods sold on credit so i make more sales to my credit customer so what happens that will increase my more asset isn't it if i make more sales to the credit customer so i'm expecting more money from the customer that will increase my asset so i'm going to write it down on the debit side again and i'm going to write invoice that is fifteen thousand for Seven, seven. Then the next one we have money received from credit customer. Money received from credit customer. Which side I'm going to write that one? I'm going to write on the credit side because if I receive the money from the uh, customer, that will reduce their balance. So I'm going to write on the opposite side, on the credit side. So I'm going to write bank. On the bank, I have received 20,000, four, five, and one. Then the next question we have, discount allowed. What happens if I give some discount to the customer? So which side I'm going to write? So I'm going to write here, discount allowed. Uh, yes, I, you are right. We are in the control account. We're going to write here sales. So you'll write sales rather than writing invoice. We'll write here sales. 
So let's write self, self, okay. Then we have, we have, the last one we have, good return by the credit customer. So what happened if the customer returned to me? Sorry. So what happened if the customer returned to me? We will record again there. So where is it gone? Self -lit. Right. Okay. So we record here as the self this one allowed is two two three. Two three three. And we have sales return. That is fifteen forty three. That's it. So opening balance on the debit side, if there is a sales, more sales, we record on the debit side again. If the money received from the customer, record on the credit side. And if there is a, a return, again on the credit side, this one allowed on the credit side. All right, so now let's, let's make a total. How much is the total here? The total is 44043, okay. 44043. Make sure you have the balance from the debit side first. So, okay, so let's do that. So, total is 44043. 44043. And the balance CD, so I have just one space here. I'm gonna write the balance CD here. That is 21, 816. That's my balance CD. 21, 816. Okay, I'm gonna follow Maha. So 21, 816, that's my balance CD. So that's it. So from the sales ledger control, we understand we're expecting 28,816 pounds from all the credit customer in total. So from the total customer expecting this balance. So let's write it down. Let's make it clear. I know we said that sales ledger control 21816. All right, so let's move on to the next one. So our sales ledger control balance is 21816. Now we talk about the individual balance that is sales ledger. On the sales ledger, let's add it all of this and see how much is the balance for the sales ledger. So add 5409-2385, then 10877, so add it all of this and see how much is the balance here. So 5409 plus 2385, Plus ten thousand eight seven seven plus one two three four plus seven eight nine plus five four nine plus eight zero six that is twenty two zero four nine that's my sales ledger balance twenty two zero four nine so this is the total of sales ledger accounts. And this is my sales ledger control. So we have now both balance, let's do that. So sales ledger control account balance, we have 21816. Total sales ledger account at 1st April, that is 22049. And the difference is how much? The difference is 233, okay? So the difference is 233, that's it. So this is the difference we have. Now, the tricky bit is to find the reason. What could explain the difference you calculated in B, tick one option. So what do you think that could be the possible reason for the uh, difference? Now on the question, you can see the difference is 233. And on the question, we have a balance for 233. That is for discount allowed, isn't it? So 233, we have a balance for discount allowed. So we would say 
If sales invoice was duplicated in the sales data control, no bank payment was not entered, total column sales debit discount allowed or omitted from the sales ledger account. This is the one. So this is the one we have uh, 233. That's why the difference is coming. Now this question, as I said, the reason could be tricky for you. Always try to do it really quick. If you can, if not, then always come back at the end of the question. That will help you more. All right, so let's move on to the next question we have. Let's do this question. There's the same thing, sales ledger control uh, reconciliation, but this time we'll do a bit different template. So this time we can see we have some sales ledger balance, sales ledger balance on 1st of September. We have Harry and Co, this is one of our customer. We have William Limited, our customer. Smith and Son, our customer, and Bernard PLC, they are our customer. So what happened, you expecting is on the debit side. You see that on the debit side means you're expecting this money. Debit side, expecting this money. Debit side, expecting this money. Credit side, that means you have to pay this money back to Smith and Son. So we are not expecting this money. This one, we may be the overpaid or for any reason we have to pay them back. So what you do, on the sales ledger, we add this, 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 minus this. So how much is the total balance from the sales ledger? We add this one, this one, this one, and minus this one, so that we have a total balance. How much is expecting from the every single customer? So let's get the figure. So the total. So is it 52,200? Okay. So 52,200. All right, so let's move on. 52,200. So 52,200. And the next one they're asking the balance of the sales ledger control account on 1st September. We don't have to calculate that. They already gave us the figure. So they're asking the difference. What is the difference between the sales ledger and the sales ledger control? 640. This is the difference between sales ledger and the sales ledger control. That's fine. And then we move to the reason now. So our, you can see that our sales ledger have more balance. Sales ledger have 52, 200. So sales ledger showing the individual showing more balance and the sales ledger control is a less balance, 51, 1, 51, 5, 6, 0. So let's write it down. Sales ledger, oh come on. So sales ledger, that is 52,200. And the sales ledger control, 51,560. Okay, so I'm gonna erase that. Okay, let's move on. So let's find the reason. So which two, which two of the reason below could explain the difference you could calculate in B. So the 640 difference you have calculated here, what could be the possible reason? Now this one, as I said, you have to be very, very careful and you need to read the reason phase, what is the possible reason? And you need to uh, identify what could be the possible reason for the difference. So here we can see our sales ledger showing 52, that is showing more balance. Sales ledger control 51, that is showing less balance. What could be the possible reason? Why sales ledger control showing less balance? Why the sales ledger showing more balance? There's a reason here. Okay, the first reason they said, good return may have been entered in the sales ledger twice. Then uh, the next one said discount allowed were omitted this can allow to enter in the debit side of the sales ledger control account. Goods sold were entered twice. 
in the customer account in the sales ledger, goods return were entered in the, on the debit side of the sales ledger control. Then we have a check received was omitted from the customer account in the sales ledger. A check received was entered twice in the customer account in the sales ledger. So which do you think the reason? Okay. So goods sold were entered twice, I think. Okay, goods sold, you say entered twice in the customer sales ledger, this one. Okay, and which, which other one you think we have to find the two? A check received is omitted. Yes, a check receipt is omitted. You said Naima, so check receipt were omitted. Yeah, so check receipt were omitted, this one. So let's, uh, okay, let's have a look like uh, this two reason, um, how it is work. Okay, so let's talk about our T account. Let's say we have a, a sales ledger balance that is 52,500 and sales ledger control is 51. So our sales ledger balance shows more balance and sales ledger control showing less balance. Let's test it one by one. Good return may have been entered in the sales ledger. So talk about sales ledger. They said good return may have been entered in the sales ledger twice. Our sales ledger balance is already more. So for example, if this is my sales ledger account, if this is my sales ledger account, let's say this is a hundred is my opening balance and a uh, good return is supposed to be 10, but I write 20. So I write twice, mistakenly I write twice. So what happened? So my balance CD was before 80, isn't it? Now, if I said, oh, I made a mistake, it's not 20, it's supposed to be 10. If I make a 10, my balance CD will go up to 90, isn't it? So my balance CD for the sales ledger already more than control. So that will be more, more, isn't it? So now it is already like more than the control. So if I said, this is the reason, that means I'm making my balance CD uh, more extra. So it, it cannot be the reason because I need to find something that reduces the balance, not going up because this one is already more. Also, no, that's not the reason. Then the next one is says, discount allowed were omitted, this discount allowed were entered in the debit side of the sales ledger control account. Now they're talking about sales ledger control account. Discount allowed were entered on the debit side of the Sales ledger control account. Now, what happened if you did that? Sales ledger control account. Now, this balance is already down. This balance CD is already down. Let's say again, our opening balance is 100 and our balance CD is 100. Yeah. Now, this said, Mistakenly, what you did, discount allowed supposed to be on the credit side, isn't it? But you write on the debit side. So let's say, oh, it's supposed to be here. Let's I write 10 here and I cross the 10 and take it here. So because of that, my balance is from 100, it will go down to 90. So my balance city will go down and this is already down. I don't want to make it more down. So this cannot be the reason. Then <clears throat> the third one we have, goods sold were entered twice in the customer account in the sales ledger. So let's talk about this one. <clears throat> goods sold. Okay, goods sold were entered twice in the customer in the sales ledger. So customer account in the sales ledger. So let's talk about sales ledger again. Let's we have opening balance 100. And let's our balance CD is 100. Now, we, say, we are saying here, goods sold were entered twice in the customer account in the sales ledger. So let's say the sales was not 100. 
it was one cell 10 and we write twice rather than writing only 10 we write 10 and 10 let's say write 10 and 10 twice now my balance cd let's say become 120 because of that now if i remove one because i made a mistake then my balance cd will go down to 110 from 120. so if this is the reason my sales ledger balance will go a little bit down and this is a little bit up, 52 is more than the control. So I think this could be the possible reason because there is only one cell, but I write mistakenly twice. Let's say we have a customer, 50 customer, and every customer have a different type of cells. And I made a cell for 10 pounds, but I record twice, 10 and 10. And because of that, my balance gone up. This could be the reason. So I said, yes, this is the reason. Then good return were entered on the debit side of the control account. That be, cannot be the reason because this is gonna be like our control account is already less, it's gonna be more or less. I don't want to make it more or less. Check receive was omitted from the customer account in the sales ledger. That could be the possible reason. Let's say I receive a check here, but I forget to enter. So as soon as I put the check here, let's say 20 pound, my balance schedule goes down to 90. So I would say that could be the reason because that will bring my balance down because it is up, so that will bring my balance down. That could be the reason. So I said, yes, this could be the reason as well. And check receive was entered in the twice in the customer account in the sales ledger. So no, I, I, don't, I don't want to make it more up. So they said twice. So that means if I cancel one, my balance will go more, more up. This is already up, so I don't want that. So these two are the reasons. So very well done, Abdul, and very well done, Maha. These two are the reasons. But uh, as you can see, this is not very easy question, and it only will be two or three marks. So for two or three marks, don't spend too much time, come back later on. And especially the reason page I have showed you at the beginning of this chapter number four, you have to make sure you have a very good understanding from there. Only that time you can answer all of this question. Otherwise leave this one for the last question. All right, but obviously if you work out with the T account, that will help you. If you just try to see with what happened in the T account, that helps a lot to understand, is it going up or down? So if it's already up, don't, don't make it too much up. If it's already down, don't make it too much down. Okay, the next one we're going to see, purchase the ledger T account format. So we're gonna see that, but before we see that, let's take a break, it's 11.30. So let's take a break, uh, let's take a 20 minute break. We come back 11.45. So after that, you're gonna start this chapter. We try to complete this chapter and uh, maybe if we have time you're going to see something from chapter number five and uh, hopefully next week you're going to complete the book so we'll try to do two chapters at least every day but then the next two chapter will be a bit little bit longer maybe we try to do something from chapter number five if, if we can otherwise you're going to complete these two chapters today so let's take a 20 minute break we'll come back around um, 11 40 and i'll see you that time and uh, before we leave, uh, as usual, please make sure everyone write your name for the attendance uh, before we go for a break. So please, everyone, write your name. And I'm going to see you at 11.40 after the break. All right, welcome back. So let's start with our activity three, purchase ledger control reconciliation. Let's have a look what you have in this question. So in this question, you can see here, we have uh, the summary of the transaction with the credit supplier, uh, this opening balance. We have good broth on credit, payment made to credit supplier, discount received, and good return to credit supplier. So we have exactly the same thing we did before, but this is for our credit supplier. So that is purchase ledger control account. So let's do this one and let's find it out. What is the reconciliation balance? So I'm gonna write it down this figure on the corner because we cannot see everything at the same time. So let's write it down before we move. So opening balance balance bd that is 15732 then credit purchase that is 
that is 15, 5, 6, 7. Then you have payment. That is 13,781. Then have discount received, 1155. Then good return, 2251. That's it. So let's move on to the question on the practice ledger control. <clears throat> okay, first thing first, opening balance. Which side I'm going to write the opening balance for the purchase ledger control? Opening balance 15,732. Which side I'm going to record this opening balance? So remember that the purchase ledger control is a liability account and the opening balance always will be in the credit side. Very, very careful. Do not take this one as a sales ledger control. Opening balance is on the credit side. So balance BD. That is 15,000. 732. Then the next one we have purchase, credit purchase. Which side I'm going to write the credit purchase? So if I buy more on credit, I'll create more liability, isn't it? So at the beginning, I'm supposed to pay 15,000 pounds. Now, if I purchase more, I have to pay more money. So I'm going to write again here purchase. That is 15,567. 15, five six seven then i have a payment so i make some payment to my supplier that's bank isn't it so the bank will come on the debit side because if i pay something that will reduce my liability and we paid thirteen thousand seven hundred thirty one thirteen thousand seven hundred and thirty one and the next one is discount received if I receive a discount from my supplier, that will also reduce my liability. So that will also come on the debit side. So discount received, it will come 1155. And we have a purchase return, that is good return. So purchase return also come on the debit side. That is two, two, five, one. That's it, isn't it? All of this. So as long as I have everything, now I can get the balance CDBD. Balance CDBD will tell us how much money still I have to pay to my supplier. So get the total first. Normally it will be the credit side. If you add this two, this will give you the higher balance. So total, total. So total is. 31299, okay, 31299. I'm gonna write the same figure opposite side, 31299. And I'm gonna get the balance CD. How much is the balance CD we have here? 31299 minus 13,731 minus 1155 minus 2251. And the balance is 14162. 14162. 14162. Okay, and that's my balance BD as well. 14162. That's it. So I'm going to write the figure here 14162 so that I can remember that. So sell, purchase, ledger control 14162. Now move to the individual ledger, that is subsidiary ledger for the purchase ledger. So let's do that, the purchase ledger. How much is the total of the purchase ledger? So we'll add all of this, and we'll compare the balance with the purchase ledger control to find the difference. And of course, the difference basically will be our reason. We need to find the reason after that. So let's add it all the purchase ledger balance uh, from our purchase ledger account. So two, three, four, five. And then you have one one five zero, one one five seven, five five seven, seven eight nine, seven nine nine eight, twenty four seventeen. That is sixteen four one three. Sixteen four one three, isn't it? So I'm gonna write here. 
purchase ledger account so 16 four one three and the purchase ledger control that one we have calculated 14 162 and the difference is two two five one okay two two five one two two five one that's it the difference now you need to look for the reason two two five one is there anything we have there two two five one let's have a look at <clears throat> Two five one. We have a figure here. Two two five one, isn't it? Good return. Okay. So let's find the difference. The reason. What may have caused the difference between the control account and the ledger balances? Good return may have been entered in the purchase ledger twice. Good return may have been entered in the control account twice. Discount received may have been entered in the purchase ledger twice. Discount received may have been entered in the control account twice. Which one you think the reason for that? 2251, <clears throat> good return. Okay, obviously you can see that 2251, you have a good return. So we have two things, good return may have been entered in the purchase ledger twice, or good return may have been entered in the control account twice. Which one is the answer? The first one or the next one? <clears throat> Which one you think? Always <clears throat> try to get the balance first. So basically you see your uh, purchase ledger control have a lower balance. This one have a higher balance. Yeah, so now, if you think is the first one, let's say you said the first one. If you sit to saying, if you think is the first one, I'll tell you how it works. Next say a good return may have been entered in the purchase ledger twice. So our purchase ledger figure is already higher. Yeah. So let's say it was 100 and the balance CD was 100. Let's say the good return. We're writing this side, isn't it? Let's write on the opposite side. The purchase ledger. So we're writing on the opposite side. So if this is a purchase ledger, the first one we talk about the first one. Let's my opening balance is 100 and my balance sheet is 100. Now good return. I'm writing this side, isn't it? Other side. <clears throat> now if I said it's supposed to be, uh, I write 20 here, and uh, I said like, it's supposed to be uh, 10, but I write 20. So I write uh, more. So if I reduce, if I make it 10 from 20, if I reduce it or decrease it, so this balance, let's say it was before 120, now it will come down to 110, isn't it? It will increase to 110. So from 100, it will go to 110. So that cannot be the reason. Why? Because my this figure, my purchase ledger figure is already up. So if I said this is the reason, because purchase ledger, on the purchase ledger, I have returned my good return, I have entered my good return twice. And if I did, uh, if I just remove one, my balance sheet will go more up. So if I, I don't want to make it more up, isn't it? Because it's already up. <clears throat> I want to find a reason that will make it decrease. So let's talk about this one. Good return may have been entered in the control account twice. Now, if I said that's my purchase ledger control, and if I said my control account balance is lower, and if I said I return twice, I record twice here, it's supposed to be 10, but I record twice, 10 and 10. If I remove one, my balance CD will go up. And I need to make it go up because it's already lower. It is already down. If I want to increase it, it will go up. So this could be the reason. So either I have to see how could I make the balance of purchase ledger make it lower or the purchase ledger control higher because I want to make it equal. I want to find a reason. And of course, on the exam, uh, you have to do the same thing. Try to do it the T account. It will help you to understand more. But if you do some practice, as I show you, there is a reason page. You can find it out everything from there. So how many types of um, uh, reason you can 
identify in the way. If you read that and if you practice some more, you'll get it. <clears throat> okay, so let's move on to the next one. Next one we have activity four. <clears throat> on the activity four, we have purchase ledger reconciliation, but this time the template is a bit different. So we can see here the purchase ledger reconciliation at the beginning of the April, the following balance are purchased. Balances, debit and credit is the purchase ledger. Purchase ledger means the individual balances. Individual balances. So we have obviously like all the balance that you're expecting as a balance of credit, isn't it? Because liability balance is always a credit balance. So this is a credit, credit, credit. That one is debit, credit, credit. So how much is the total balance? The way we did before for the sales ledger, we're gonna do the same thing for the purchase ledger. All you need to do, you're gonna add it all the credit and minus the debit to find the balance because I'm not gonna pay this one. Maybe this one I overpaid. So I'm gonna get it back. I'm not gonna pay this one. So I'll add it all the credit balance and find the difference. So the requirement here, they're asking what should be the balance of the purchase ledger control account in order to, in order for to, to reconcile with the total balance and the purchase ledger. So what balance you are you're looking for from here? So all I need to do, I need to add the every single supplier I have, like this, this, this. Only this supplier, William, I paid him extra, so he need to pay me back the debit balance. I'm not, I don't have any liability for him. So I'm gonna take away his balance and rest of the thing, I'm gonna add it all of this. Can you get the figure? <clears throat> Three, 33, 33, okay. All you need to do, you need to add it all the credit and you need to minus the debit. So which one are you expecting the answer from here? Fifty-nine. Fifty-nine. How come Maha you have fifty? There in the answer there is no fifty even, isn't it? So fifty-nine one six one credit. Fifty-nine one six one. What do you think? Yeah, 59161, and it should be, what, well, debit or credit? It's credit, because my credit is higher than my debit, isn't it? So my credit balance is higher than the debit. Second one is the card balance, okay, so we go for that one. So credit balance, 59161. Why it is a credit? is a liability. That's why it's a credit balance, and credit is higher than the debit. So if you see this question in the exam, all you need to do is add it all of this, minus that, and get the balance, that's it. All right, so if you do practice once again, you'll find it not difficult, it's really easy. Okay, let's do this one. Number B, saying, show whether the following are true or false. Let's do that. The first one they're asking, the purchase ledger control account enables a business to identify how much is owed by credit customer in total. Purchase ledger control identify how much is due from the customer, credit customer. Is it true or false? Purchase ledger account identify how much is due from customer. That's false. Purchase ledger have no relationship with the customer. Purchase ledger, purchase ledger Control account have relationship with the supplier, not the customer. This is absolutely false. The next one they're asking, the total balance in the purchase ledger should reconcile with the balance in purchase ledger control account. That's true, isn't it? Ideally it should be, that's true. The third one they're asking, a debit balance in the purchase ledger indicate a reduction in the amount of total amount owed to supplier. Is it true? I think it's true, isn't it? If I'm writing anything on the debit side, because liability we're writing on the credit side, anything we're writing on the debit side is the reduction of the balance. So yeah, that's true. All right, so this is good. Okay. So, 
is the creative control. Okay, let's talk about the irrecoverable debt. So let me tell you what is irrecoverable debt. Now this word may be uh, new for some of you, irrecoverable debt. Now what is irrecoverable debt? Let me explain to you in a minute. So when you make a credit sell, when we make a credit sell, so we create a credit customer, credit sell. So we create a customer, what type of customer? Credit customer, because the customer did not make the payment yet. That's why we're saying it's a credit sell. Now, what happened if the customer, if the customer, uh, some customer did not pay? So let's say you have 100 customer and out of 100 customer, one customer not paying to you. One customer said, no, I'm not gonna pay. Or maybe the customer is vanished. The customer sees the business. The customer have no money to pay to you. The customer is bankrupt. For any reason, if we don't expect any money from the customer, let's say we have 1000 customer and out of 1000 customer, maybe one customer or two customer or five customer, they never pay you. So we call them bad debt. Bad debt. So if the customer don't pay, or if the customer cannot pay for any reason, or if we expect the customer not going to pay us, we call it bad debt. Bad debt means the customer not going to pay us. So after a certain period, if we 100% confirm, after a certain period, if we 100% confirm, we are not going to get this money from this customer. We're not gonna cover this money from this customer. This is not possible to recover. We call it irrecoverable debt. We call it irrecoverable debt. That means the money, it is not possible to recover from the customer. The money, it is not possible to recover from the customer. We call it irrecoverable debt. Now, this irrecoverable debt, we have to remove from our system, isn't it? For example, when you make a credit sale, when you make a credit sale, we make a journal. We said sales ledger control debit VAT credit and sales credit. Isn't it? So when you make a credit sale, we record this journal. But after a certain period, if I know this customer not going to pay me. So I have to reduce my sale, otherwise I'm gonna pay more tax, isn't it? So I'll say that's not my income anymore because this customer never paid to me, that's my expense. So I have to claim this one back. The VAT I have to claim back because I'm not gonna pay VAT when the customer never paid to me. If the customer gone bad debt, I'm not gonna pay VAT for that. And this is not my actual sales at all. So I have to remove it from my system. How I remove that? I make the opposite entry, isn't it? If something is debit, I make it credit. If something is credit, I make it debit. I do the opposite. So that time I said, irrecoverable debt, that is this one, is debit, because that's my expense. I'll make my VAT also debit, because I'm not gonna pay the VAT for that, and Sales ledger control is credit. So that means my total customer balance will be go down by this amount. So this sales ledger control will credit will cross my sales ledger control debit. The VAT credit will cross my VAT debit. And that was income. And now it will be expense. So that will cross each other. And there will be no impact. The impact will be zero. So when there is an irrecoverable debt, we have to record this journal so that all the journal we have recorded previously that will offset each other. So you need to memorize this journal for the irrecoverable debt. Let's see the journal. The journal here is irrecoverable debt expense, that is debit, VAT, it is debit, and sales ledger control, that is credit. Uh, yes, Abdul, when we called it write-off. So we, if when you want to write off, we use this journal to write off that. All right, <clears throat> so this is the way we can write off from our system. Okay, so we have a journal here. Let's have a look at this journal, activity five. Say credit customer, 
uh, a credit customer G has ceased trading. Ceased means stop. So they close the business. Ceased trading. Weighing Jessica, 600 plus VAT. 600 plus VAT. Record the journal entry needed in general ledger to write off the net amount of the VAT. So they're asking, so this person, we have one customer, his name is Gerland, Geraldine, okay. So Gerald, so Gerald, what happened? He ceased the trading, he stopped his business. He said, I'm not gonna do that any business, so I cannot pay. So if he said, I'm a bankrupt, I cannot pay, how are we going to write off now? Uh, how long we have to wait before write off? Six months, Abdul, we need to wait six months before you write off. Okay, so <clears throat> now how we write off? We do the journal. We know the journal. The journal is irrecoverable, bad debt expense, that is debit. Then we have VAT, debit and sales ledger control that is credit so how much is the irrecoverable debt that is 600 this is our money so this expense vat is a 120 that is our money i'm going to claim it back and because of this i'm going to get less money from my customer that will be 720 so this 720 I'll get less from my customer and I'm making it credit because normally sales ledger control is debit, isn't it? I make it credit, that means I'm making it down. All right, the next one we have another credit customer, DD Dayton has ceased trading, okay? Uh, Wayne Jessica Limited, 5,400 including VAT. This time including VAT. So how much would be the VAT, that's the question. So irrecoverable debt expense, that is 5,000, and then VAT, and sales ledger control. So sales ledger control will be 5,400, that will be credit. How much will be the VAT for that? <clears throat> How much is the VAT we have inside of the 5,400? 900, okay. So 900 is the VAT, that's my debit. And how much is the irrecoverable debt? The difference, 5,400 minus 900. So 5,400 minus 900, that gives me 4,500. That's it. This question all is in the exam, all is in the exam for four marks. Just to write the journal, irrecoverable debt is a debit, VAT is debit, sales ledger control is a credit. This question all is in the exam, so make sure you get it. All right, so let's move on. What do we have? I think this is the end of the chapter. So let's quickly move to chapter number five a little bit. I'm gonna write it down, some uh, formula for you. You write it down, it will help you to understand for the next chapter for the next week. So chapter number five, we have, uh, the chapter is called journal. Now this journal is not about the journal we have done for the sales or income. This journal is all about for the payroll. So we're going to record everything on the payroll and we say it's the payroll journal. How we do that? So how we record the payroll? So payroll is all about our gross salary, our tax, our national insurance. So how we record all of this, we're going to see everything from this chapter. I'm gonna write it down some formula for you. <clears throat> Before we write it down, we discuss about something, uh, how, how the payroll work, how the salary is calculated. Now on the salary, we have the first thing that is called gross pay. Gross pay. Gross pay is the income that you earn because of your empl employment. Because of your employment, whatever money you earn before any deduction, before any type of reduction. Deduction means the tax, national insurance, for anything. Before any deduction, the money you have earned from your employment, we called it gross pay. For example, it is 2,000 pounds. Then from the gross pay, as employee, you have to pay the tax. Let's say this is 200 pounds. Then you pay the national insurance, that is employee national insurance. We have two types of national insurance. One is employee and one is employer. 
So employee pay for employee and employer paid for the company. So employee national insurance that you paid 200, for example, and if you pay the pension, this is your pension, that is employee e pension, that means employee pension 100. So you earn 2000 pound, from there you paid for the tax 200, for the national insurance 200, for the pension 100. So ultimately 1500 you're receiving to your bank account. And we called it net wages. This is from the employee point of view. Employee, EE -E means employee. So as employee, you earn the salary, you called it gross pay. From the gross pay, we take away the tax, we take away the national insurance, we take away the pension, and whatever is the money left over, or whatever is the money remaining, we pay it to your bank account, and we called it net pay. So this is the money actually received this is the money employee actually received on his or her bank account from the gross pay, 2000 to 1500. This is from the employee point of view. As employer, as a business, as a company, you have to pay national insurance and the pension as well. So for example, ER is the employer. The employer also pay national insurance, NIC. ERNIC, employee NIC, let's say 200, and ER pension, let's say another 100, 300. So this 300, employer also pay because of this employee. For example, you have an employee here named A. So because of A, the company, let's say X Limited, they also need to pay some national insurance and the pension even though you are paying your national insurance and the tax and the pension because you work for that company the company also need to pay some tax and national insurance because of you because of you working for that company the company also need to pay some national insurance and some pension as well so for example for employing this person a if you want to keep this person for your company, how much will be the cost for you? The cost will be 2000 as a gross pay, so 2000, that money you earn, plus the money you paid because of him as a national insurance and the pension, 300. That is 2300. This is called wages expense, total wages expense. Try to understand that again. So when you work for a company, the money you have earned, we call it gross pay. Gross pay, the money you have earned before any deduction from your salary. From the gross pay, we pay tax, we pay national insurance, we pay pension. Whatever is the remaining, we call it net pay. And the net pay is the money you receive to your bank account. And because of you, the business have to pay some national insurance and the pension. So this is called employer's NIC and the employer's pension. So this is only because of you, they have to pay. Now for, for the employee, for the employee A, how much the company need to spend? So the company need to spend 2000, that is as a gross pay, and additional 300 because of the employer's NI and the employer's pension. So the, for the company, the total cost will be 2300, even though LA receiving only 1500 to his bank account, but for him, the cost for the company is 2,300. So this is the story of the payroll. The next thing is, um, we have two places we pay the deduction. One is HMRC and one is pension authority. So the tax and the national insurance. So tax and the national insurance goes to HMRC. So tax and employee national insurance and the employer national insurance, both national insurance. Tax and both national insurance goes to HMRC, but the pension goes to pension authority. Remember, pension never go to HMRC. You never paid pension to HMRC. Pension always goes to pension 
authority in the exam never click pension go to hmrc pension go to pension authority and uh, tax and national insurance is to go to hmrc so this is the basic understanding for the payroll sometimes the employee contribute for the trade union we're going to see it later on but for the time being just understand this that will be helpful so now i'm going to write it down some journals you have to if you have a pen and paper you can write it down or maybe later on you can read from the chapters the first journal we're going to see record wages expense record wages expense record wages expense what will be the journal for that that will be wages expense debit wages control credit wages expense debit wages control credit and what will be the amount inside will i have gross pay gross pay plus employer nic plus employer pension so this amount will come under the uh, section of wages expense the next journal we're going to see this very important chapter we're expecting at least 20 marks from this chapter easy 20 marks if you know it the next journal we're going to see net wages paid net wages paid the journal will be wages control debit bank credit because we are paying from the bank bank will go down bank credit and the amount will be here gross salary or wages minus tax minus employee national insurance employee national insurance minus employee pension gross salary minus employee national insurance minus tax minus employee pension three things that will give you the figure for net wages paid the third one you're going to see hmrc liability hmrc liability the journal will be wages control debit hmrc credit and the amount will be tax plus employee national insurance plus employer national insurance that's it so other we have some few more journal but that's going to be easy we don't have to explain that uh, if you can record this three uh, if you can remember this three out say you will get 80 percent marks so only that will be the calculation how to do it but you're going to see the example you're going to do a lot of practice anyway but you have to memorize this thing three things the first one wages um, record wages expense so wages control wages expense debit wages control credit the amount will be gross wages plus employers nic plus employers pension the next one will be net wages paid that will be gross wages minus tax minus employee national insurance minus employee pension so any deduction from the employee then the third one will be hmrc in hmrc you only pay two things tax and the national insurance not the pension so maybe i'll write one more journal pension liability pension liability so journal will be wages control debit and pension authority credit amount will be employee pension plus employer pension 
discuss it. So make a note of all, all of this four journal. That will be very helpful for you when you practice that. And if possible, try to read this two chapter in advance because chapter number uh, six will be a bit tricky. So my advice will be at least read ch chapter number six. That is a long chapter. Hopefully next week you're gonna finish chapter five really quick and we move to chapter number six and try to understand everything. But if you can um, memorize these four journals, uh, that will be like 50% uh, job will be done. The rest of the thing, just a practice. So uh, hopefully like if you can uh, read this chapter in advance, that will be helpful for us, you. Uh, you and me both, we can go at the same time uh, a bit faster because next chapter, chapter number six will be tricky. So please read yourself, that will help you more. And top of that, like chapter number five is uh, all about the payroll journal. We, all, we have already discussed and you have already known now what type of thing will come inside of the gross pay, what is net pay, what is the HMRC, and what is the pension, and how we record the journal. If you know that 60 to 70% job is already done, all you need to do, you need to record the journal. It's 20 marks question. So my advice will be, make sure you memorize the journal. It will be definitely in the exam. So it will be definitely, definitely in the exam. All right, so um, we're gonna uh, finish today because, um, uh, we have uh, already done the chapter and we have done something from chapter number five. Hopefully next week we're gonna complete our uh, chapter number uh, uh, five and six and the course will be done. Then you will do one week revision. So after next week, you're gonna do one more week revision and you'll be uh, ready for the exam. So once you do the exam, you'll be able to qualify it. So that will be end of the course. As I said, this course will be really, really uh, small. So in three weeks, you're gonna finish and uh, make sure you do some practice because if you do practice now, you don't have to do too many practice before the exam. If you understand everything now, that means before the exam, everything will be very, very easy for you. But if you don't practice a little bit now, you'll see it's gonna be difficult. All right, Naima, thank you. Uh, thank you very much for joining me today. And hopefully like I'm gonna see you next week, uh, same time. And we're gonna do our uh, next class of uh, the last two chapter, and uh, hopefully, like, we'll be fine. Hopefully, whatever we're doing, we're understanding everything. And uh, let's say uh, on the exam time, it will be okay if you do some revise. So I'll see you next week, guys. So take care of yourself and uh, do some revision. Make sure, and we'll start from chapter number five next week. If you have any question during the time, you can email me. I'll definitely get back to you. All right, so I'll see you next week, um, same time.